of American Horror Story Apocalypse left viewers blown away by the incredible season premiere. But there were tons of ambiguous questions that require further explanation. Now, out of the many that I found, I've narrowed them down to eight. If you'd like to support the channel, leave a like or subscribe. Link to my group, The Freaks of AHS on Facebook, is in the description. And come join The Freak Show. Now, a spoiler to you out there, if you haven't watched this episode, do not watch this video. Number one, I can't believe we actually did it. In the opening of the episode, Coco calls her boyfriend, Brock. In the background of Brock's location, there's a news report on the television. The reporter informs the viewers of bombing sites around the world by ICBMs. And if you're not familiar with that term, ICBMs are intercontinental ballistic missiles, which means having the ability to nuke a city from across the globe. Now, what did the anchor mean when he said, I can't believe we actually did it? Did we actually launch the bombs, America? Or did we piss off another country, ultimately leading to our own demise? And maybe did we trust the wrong politician? Some viewers think that maybe North Korea did it, but I don't think so. They are way too smart for that. You can't bomb half the world without suffering a nuclear winter yourself. For example, if the supervolcano underneath Yosemite National Park exploded, it would shift the climate of the Earth. Imagine the devastation if nuclear missiles were sent around the world. No, I definitely don't think it's North Korea because I believe they would know that. So I do believe there's another explanation behind the apocalypse, and this one is a huge clue. Number two, who flew Coco's plane? Coco's plane was handled by a male dressed in black who stayed behind to ensure that the plane took off with her. Then that we see the plane was piloted by no one. Then it was rocked by an explosion. Yet the plane still made it to the destination of Outpost 3. So who flew the plane? Some think it was technology known as autopilot, but I'm not so sure. The plane still made it safely to its intended destination even after the explosion. So my theory is it's enchanted. But who enchanted it? Witches? Michael Langdon? Hopefully we'll get an answer to this question in the episodes. Number three, what's special about Timothy's DNA? As revealed in the episode, Timothy sent his blood into an ancestry site and his blood was flagged as being able to survive. Now what is it about his blood that flagged this? Emily revealed that she was in jail for protesting on a college campus. But there's something special about her, just like Timothy. Does he have witch DNA? And whatever it is, why didn't Timothy's brother have the same? The people who took Timothy said that his brother's blood wasn't identical. But what made him so special? A favorite fan theory out there is that Emily is Lee's kidnapped daughter from Roanoke. Another theory is they're Kit's children from Asylum. But I don't think that that can be true because they grew up at a point where I think they would recognize each other, not make out. So this is another question that I do hope we'll find the answer to. Number four, how did the Greys get their jobs? The Greys live in Outpost 3. They clean and keep the house tidy. But how did they get the job? And how were they chosen, so to speak? Are they family of the cooperative or somebody else important? Their selection fascinates me greatly since Mallory was made a gray when Evie and her grandson were made purples, despite their not paying a ticket for their stay. Coco's father said that he paid for four tickets. So why wasn't Mallory allowed the fourth? We understand by Coco explaining that Evan would not touch her hair unless he was a purple, and Evie had been at the Golden Globes and best friends with Natalie Wood. Therefore, she is supposed to be a purple. However, why was Mallory left out? Now guys, I don't know about you, but I would rather be a rasper in the apocalypse than a gray in the outpost. <laughs> I guess the same can be asked about Venable. How we We're halfway through the list, so I'll take a moment to thank my amazing patrons. Alicia, Mia, and baby Jalen George, Lisa Lee, No Tell Hotel, Michael Mullins Wright, Vic and Stark, Kenny Joseph, Don Ford, X Mesa, Scott Bryant, Jill Post, John Morgan, The Leopard Cat, Connor Thane, Cody Spencer, Sookie Fawn, Shane, Mike Gedney, and Debbie Ebby Babebi. Number five, 
who runs the cooperative? The powerhouse company is run by someone who knew the apocalypse was upon us years in advance. But who could that be? Maybe the witch hunters from Coven who conveniently called themselves the Cooperation, aka Delphi Trust. But what about Lucifer? Now there's another fan theory that could be likely, I guess. <laughs> I'll explain why in another example. But what about Cordelia and her coven? Or someone we haven't been introduced yet? I'm very excited to see who runs the cooperative. Number six, who wrote the 666 on Timothy's mirror and tried to warn him? My cable captions indicated it was a woman who warned Timothy. But was it a witch or somebody else who was trying to connect with him? Maybe his mom from beyond the grave. If it was the uh, actual witches, are they trying to protect him because possibly he's a brother warlock? Now guys, this is way too ambiguous for me right now, so I am really ready to find out the answer on this one. Number seven, why is mating forbidden? My first instinct is to say the outpost can't afford another mouth to feed, let alone a newborn child. But Venable says unauthorized mating is forbidden, not just mating itself. So why? And how the hell do you apply and be authorized for mating? And will powerful people like Timothy and Emily create a rival for Michael? Is that why they're prohibited on breeding? I mean, or excuse me, maybe not breeding, but, you know, um, mating. <laughs> I mean, this is one question that I cannot wait to find the answer to. Number eight, is Lucifer part of the cooperative? After looking at the signatures on Michael's badge for many, many hours, I noticed it appeared like Lucifer's signature on the bottom line. Right as I was recording this segment, I was able to get a better close-up of the name underneath the signature. So this person is indicated as president of the cooperative. And again, it looks to me like Lucifer is the signature right above it. So what do you guys think of this? I was actually able to solve my own ambiguous question by in seeing that Lucifer um, is the president of the cooperative. So do you think that's his signature? Let me know in the comments. Honestly, I have no clue as to the name on the first line. It kind of looks like the first name starts with a J and the last name an S. Now, as y'all know, I love your theories and ideas, so make sure you leave them below. Weekly Wednesday live streams are every single Wednesday, and Beyond the Heart, my unofficial American Horror Story after show is every Wednesday night, immediately following the current episode of American Horror Story Apocalypse. Thanks for watching and beware of Sexy Scathich. I will never say her name right ever, ever. Beware of Sexy Scathich.